So I'm really, really grateful right now. I'm gonna just freestyle because I don't have anything written. But I definitely want to share a little bit about the type changer. I want to share some stuff on social issues. And I also want to talk about what inspired me to write this. I was inspired by many different things, but I'm going to do like one or two, two real main points, key points. Okay. So... I'm gonna start when I was young and then I'm gonna move up from there. Oh, perfect, you're here. Come on in. You read the best part. I was like, man, she's gonna come for this part. She's gonna come for this part. I still got one or two other people coming, y'all, so, you know, but I wanna keep it moving. Okay, back to what I was saying. So, <laughs> so what inspired me to write this book, growing up, I grew up with a thick hair texture, a coarse hair texture. Y'all know back in the 90s, that's where I grew up, having this type of hair texture wasn't in like how it's in now. So a lot of, even, even close circles made me feel uncomfortable because of my hair texture. So that's the foundation, the deep seed of the type changer. Now let's move forward. I go natural. And I went natural when it wasn't too popular to go natural with your hair. That means stop having relaxed in your hair so your hair won't be chemically straight. And when I did it, I did it to come out of that image of what having chemically straight hair is. Now, I'm not bashing anybody. So I'm just putting that out there. This is my story. So when I, when I changed my hair, I didn't know my whole life would change. I didn't know being natural, I literally cut my hair was half an inch. I didn't know that was gonna help me with my confidence. I didn't know it was gonna help me with my self-esteem. I didn't know it was gonna start changing what I ate. I didn't know any of this. I just wanted to change. And it was starting to become like a little bit popular on YouTube, so I was like, okay, I can do this. And it changed my life to the point where even when I tempted to go back, I had people like stop me. I worked at like coffee shop like this and I had people like stop me. So I was like, wow, this must be deep for some reason. Okay, so my hair starts to grow a little bit, but then it gets to this weird, awkward stage. Have y'all ever cut y'all hair before and it got to like an awkward stage? And you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? You know? So it gets to this awkward stage and I go on YouTube and I see a video from a natural hair YouTuber. Her name um, was Nat Queen on YouTube. And I watch it and she talks about why 4C hair is lit. My hair texture is 4C, which is how they classify hair texture by different numbers and letters combined. And as you see, when you came up here, you probably noticed that, which I'm gonna get more into as well. So she started talking about all these reasons why my hair texture and her hair texture was important and all the things it can do, it can be straight. My hair texture, when I wash it, it's like this. But when I straighten it, if y'all see, my hair's down here. You know, and it, it can just do so much. If you can mold it like sculpture, you can let it frizzle up and, and, and just shrivel up to nothing, or you can stretch it out and scare people in the road. You can do whatever you want to do with this hair texture, and I love it. So she made me love it more. And I was just sitting there, and I started thinking to myself, talking to my husband, I love you, boop. And I started thinking, I was like, man, I think I want to write a book about hair texture or something. I didn't really have the whole book yet. Uh, some of it came from Tony, Tony Morrison, which is the bluest eye. And I thought about the curliest curl and how everyone wants that curly hair texture, the good hair. You know what I mean? Chris Rock did that movie about the good hair. Everyone wants that hair texture. So I kind of started to write it along that, but then it changed. It got to something deeper. It changed into what happened if we were discriminated against because of our hair texture? And what would that look like? So this is a young adult speculative fiction book, which means what will it look like? That's what speculative fiction means. You take the common modern day society and then you say, what would it look like if there were no gas stations? What would it look like if we were mistreated because of this? What would, and you just go from there. So I'm writing and guess what? I'm done and I'm starting to go to agents and get this book represented. And I go on social media and I'm just scrolling through on YouTube. And I notice it says, you know, YouTuber dies from hands of boyfriend, like domestic violence or whatever. And I look again, and it's the same girl that I seen 
few years prior that inspired me to write the book. Got killed from her boyfriend, stabbed to death. So I'm just sitting here and I'm just like, what? Like out of every, any video I could have seen, that's the video that I see. The video to inspire me to, you know what it takes to write? It takes a lot. <laughs> so that means her inspiration was high. And that's the person who died when this book was over. Like literally I'm done. I'm just now reaching out to agents and trying to get my book published. And, and she, she dies suddenly like this. Her name was Nap Queen on YouTube, but in real life it was Shayna Donahue. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I was just even thinking about it, it just makes me emotional. I was just really, whew, I was, I, was, I was messed up for a little bit, but I still pushed on. And it's here today. Um, in the book, the type changer is the main character. Her name is Olua. And Olua. She is so indecisive. She doesn't know what she wants to be in life. She's 17. She's going into this stage where she's like, do I want to go across the bridge and live better? Do I want to go to a Bequilon and live in a foreign tribe that I don't even know of, but at least I'll be with my people and won't be discriminated against? Or do I want to stay here with my boyfriend, Tamello? And if y'all were here, I'm going to play it again, the audio. You can hear Tamello's voice as well. What do I want to do? Just like many, I know I probably have at least one seven-year-old here. Just like many seven-year-olds, they don't know what to do. Just like many 30-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, they don't know what to do. Sometimes you got someone pulling you this way, someone pulling you that way. And sometimes it's the media. It doesn't have to be one person. It's the media, it's YouTube saying, you gotta look like this. You gotta get this much likes. You gotta have a boyfriend by this age and a husband by that age and have a kid by this age. It's all just pulling you in different directions, but what do you truly want? So that was a Lua situation. She didn't know what to do. And the funny thing is, what to do means she has to change her hair texture. So it circles right back to that. Does she want to keep her natural 4C hair? But if she keeps it, she has to eat beans and chili and beans and chili all day. She has to live with dirty water and has to maybe be subjected to lab fluids which are a drug that's creeping into the community of east st louis in the book but in real life it's also creeping into the community so i don't want to give away the story but the mentor of the book kate queen which is also shana donahue who was my mentor my hair mentor who was who died suddenly helps her see who she truly is, helps her see what she can truly accomplish, and that the gift in her is big enough to save the entire kink race. And as it looks like everyone in here is a part of the kink race to me, if y'all know what I mean. So when she realizes her, her power and that she's able to, shall I say it, maybe even have all of these hair textures, and what, did that, what does that mean for the society? She has the gift. She has the gift to stop discrimination. And then what does that look like? Does that look like better health care? Does that look like paved roads? Does that look like a better school system? Does that look like businesses growing and thriving in your community? Does that look like not being afraid to take a walk at night? What, what would happen if we had the cure for texturism, which is also racism? So now that I told you a little bit about the book and I also told you about the background of the book, I wanna open the floor and talk about some issues in the book and some issues in, in this society. In real life, East St. Louis is almost number one for crime in America and poverty. Everyone focuses on what? Name two cities that people focus on. Chicago, Chicago that's one. Detroit, that's two. But no one talks about East St. Louis. So I'm gonna talk about East St. Louis. Why not? You say, oh, I'm in Atlanta. I can still make a difference. I can still get the word out. There are people dying and suffering right now as we speak in East St. Louis because of multiple reasons, but mostly because 
of the texture of their hair? <laughs> or should we say their skin color? And I think it's really sad because a lot of them don't even know that they're in this whole poverty state. They're living in this mindset and they don't even know. And they don't even know they can break out until someone like the type changer comes in. We can all be type changers. A type changer is a person that uses empathy for positive change. That's what a type changer is. What does empathy mean? Empathy means that being in someone else's shoes, understanding them. So that's how you start to build back the community, slowly. I really feel sad because a lot of the time, the government, which is called Govy in this book, as you read, you'll start seeing the comparison and the symbology. A lot of the time, they're the culprit. I'm just gonna be frank. And people see communities that are beat down, that are impoverished, and see people on drugs and prostitutes or whatever you wanna see, fell on hard times and broken down roads. And why don't they, they just do something? Why don't they do something? They can't. <laughs> A lot of them are stuck in this 4C mindset as Tamela will say in the book as you read. A lot of them are stuck. They're not, they're not realizing their creativity, their gift can bring them out of that place. And they're, they're in bondage to media. Govey has these blaring media screens everywhere that constantly tells them, shave your hair, cut your hair, come be like us over here. What is that like in this world? What's the symbol of that? Instagram maybe? What, what else? Facebook, the TV, even your homegirl who's telling you, you gotta be like, you ain't gonna get no man if you don't look like that. If I kept believing that, where would I be? Cause I'm skinny, but whatever. So, <laughs> so anyways, long story short, that is what's going on in East St. Louis in this reality and in the reality of the type changer. And it's also going here in, on here in Lithonia as well. It's going in around Atlanta, it's going in globally. This is what is happening to our people. We're not understanding our gift. We're not understanding that we have the creativity, the uniqueness to make a change. We're not understanding how to use empathy like the type changer. We can use empathy towards our parents, towards ourselves, towards you know the sister or brother next to us, even a 1A person. And in my book, there is no race. So if you ever see it in living color, you may be freaked out a little bit because there's not like a race. It's all about the hair texture. So that is pretty much my spiel. I can go on and on, but I don't want to give it away too much. But as I said, this is the immersive experience. So if you haven't came up here before, if you did, and I said I was going to explain, you're welcome to come back and feel these things or touch these things. And let's let you know that's green Kool-Aid right there. It's nothing scary. <laughs> the reason why I use Kool-Aid, I think I actually still have it, the ingredients. You got red 40, blue 40, citric acid, some other coloring. And then you pour a gallon of sugar in there. And then 10 years later, you're wondering why diabetes is on the loose. You can't walk. This is what's going on in the type changer. They're flooding the streets with stuff like this. This is what's going on in Atlanta. They're flooding the streets with stuff like this. This is what's going on in East St. Louis. They're flooding the streets with stuff like this. You can go for miles and only see a gas station and that's what you're gonna eat, a honey bun for your dinner. Now, that corn syrup and the honey bun, boo, that blood sugar just shot up. And you feel hype for a quick second, hype enough to maybe do some gang violence. Hype enough to maybe cuss somebody out. Maybe hype enough to chill, I don't know. But, you, but you're feeling hype. And then out of nowhere you just start feeling really sleepy. And it keeps going and going and going and going until they say diabetes, until they say high blood pressure, until they say what color is her casket. This is what's going on. And you say it's not a big deal. What's up? You say it's not a big deal but it is a big deal. 
when you all you see is a gas stations in certain neighborhoods, it's not their fault. They're doing this on purpose, Gubby. They're they're setting this up for a reason. This is not healthy. This is not quality of life. This is not even humane to have your nearest grocery store with fresh fruits and vegetables 15 miles away. But then you go in some neighborhoods and you just roll out. Ooh, ooh. Here we go, Whole Foods, here we go, Kroger, Publix, whatever, Farmer's Market, whatever. But in certain neighborhoods, you will not see this. And then when you even go in there, you may see an apple full of wax, full of pesticides, but that's a, that's a rabbit hole. I'm not gonna go there right now. I don't, that's a rabbit hole. You know I'm going in on that. But I'm not gonna go there today. So even though it's lab flus in the book, in this reality, it's the disgusting food that they keep feeding people like us. And how are they feeding it? Because they're, that's our only option. You hop off the bus stop, you see a public, a, a Popeyes. You hop off the bus stop, you see a liquor store. You hop off the bus stop, you see a, a beauty supply store full of weed. Like I said, no judgment. But this is what you're seeing. Nothing else. A strip club. A rundown school. Okay, Sadani, so the topic you're talking about is a little too big, you know. No, it's not. These are the conversations we need to have in our, our, around our table, around our dinner table. Growing up, I used to love talking to my mom and dad about maybe not exactly this, but just different stuff. When was the last time we sat around the dinner table and talked? Put down the cell phone and talk about what's going on in the community. Talk about what's going on globally. Talk about what's going on with the kinks or you know who they really are. When and why not? Are we too busy? Is it uncomfortable? Are we shy? Do we not know really what to say? Because I can, I can, you know, and I, I'm, I'm inventive, as you see. I can invent some cards, and I can, I can like put them on Amazon, and it'll be like, what's the say around the dinner table? And I can tell them. That, that's how quick I've made up about something to sell, and that's how quick Tamelo and the story found shea butter and started to sell it to the kings. So their scaly skin that they have. Now is soft and smooth. Their hair that was coarse and nappy, now is soft and smooth. And now he became an entrepreneur and he started to build up East St. Louis again. This is fictional, but let's say it was it was real. So that's how quick I just made that thing up. And that's how quick we can all make something up, even if it's just for a side hustle. It can become a mainstream eventually. And this is how you build up your society. This is how you build up your family, build up your legacy. It's 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 you can do it. It's possible. But I know we work all day, so we have to grab that lab fluid to carry us over to the next day. And then we neck up and then work all day and we have to grab the lab fluid to carry us to the next day. We got to throw on the 1A wig to carry us to the next day. It's a, it's a trap. It's a trap to keep us from our true identity, our true calling. If y'all know me, all of my books always have that hint of true identity because that's all I'm about. I like to play around in theater as well, so I am about make-believe. I mean, I write fiction. But I like true identity at the same time. Who are you really behind it all? Behind what Gubby is telling you to be? Behind how the society wraps you in this rat race? I know quarantine gave people some time to think. Oh, 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 oh I got time to think now. Okay, but let me get right back on social media. I think every, all of that's fine, you know? But everything in moderation, even the corn syrup, even the lab fluids or whatever, the burger cake, whatever this symbolizes to you, it's okay here and there. But if this is what we're depending on for lunch and dinner every day, no, they're robbing us blind. Oh, you say it's three burgers for $2. Okay, I get that. But what is that medical bill gonna look like later? Oh, but Medicaid gonna do it. Medicaid gonna take care of it. The government got, they got me. No, they don't. Because I used to work at an eyeglasses place. Remember, and they would have the glasses all lined up, but if you had Medicare or Medicaid, you could only pick out of these little three sections right here, right. not this whole wall. Right. And that's what's going on with people here, with this hair texture. They can only pick from these three little sections of glasses, not this whole wall, all these different kinds. You're limited. That's what they're trying to make us, limited. That's why they give us limited food, limited clothing. Everyone has to dress alike. Everyone has to look a certain way. Limited makeup options. 
<laughs> limited, limited everything. They're soon gonna limit our families and the numbers of kids we can have through different means. But that's another rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't think that Gubby got you. They don't got you. That's what people, the kids are like, don't worry, Gubby got me. I can take my little measly rations and I can make chili out of it. I can make this out of it. I can make that out of it and watch. But come on. Then you cross the bridge and in, in this United States, it's East St. Louis, then there's actually a gateway bridge. And now they're in St. Louis. And when they cross over to the bridge, I wish he came today. I met a guy from East St. Louis and I wanted him to be here, but I understand. When you cross the bridge, he told me that it's a whole different life. Different food options, different clothing, different school options, better schools, better books, libraries that are actually open and not run down with a book that's taped on the back. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause I went to the library right down there and I was like, okay. So th this, is, this is where my passion is, this is where my heart's at. My feet will be in East St. Louis soon and this movement will start no matter what. I have a little bit of everyone in me. I have a little bit of Tamello, which is the, the male voice and leader in the story who wants to be, build back East St. Louis. I have a little bit of City, which is the overseer and leader for the mission to Abekalon, which basically that, that ideology is, if y'all know who Marcus Garvey is, he wants us to go back to Africa. So some of us think, oh, we want to stay here and make this place great again. Some of us want to go back to Africa. There's a lot of people having an exodus over there now in Ghana, Nigeria, and building up businesses. And then some of us say, forget all that. Let me grab this wig and let me head on over to that nine to five, to that W. Like, no judgment. Like I said, I'm like, no judgment. I'm just building awareness. Let me just head on over and do what they need me to do, work around the clock and be tired when I come home so I can grab me a burger, lab fluid, or whatever you want to call it, soda pop, and fall asleep on the couch and do it all over again the next day until we're about 65 and a half. And that social security kick in. And now we feeling alive just to die five years later. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with my naked eyes. Literally, like, seen it. <sighs> Man. It's a big mission. But like I said, I got a little bit of everybody in me. They said every author does. Every, every author is a little bit of every character in them or they wouldn't be able to write it. Mm -hmm. So as you read, you may be like, oh, okay, I, I see that's part of Sadani. Oh, I know that was Sadani. Like, I didn't know she had that part. And some of it is actual real research that I had to do. Real research to make sure I had everything right and everything is lining up with the gangs, with the violence. And then another thing, this is my last thing because I know I'm getting long now, but I, like I said, this is my love. So what do y'all think? Is there a connection between quality of food and violence? Yes. Absolutely. So let's start. Let's just start there with an open floor. You don't got to get up and raise your hand or nothing, but if you wanted to share, be my guest. So what could that connection be with quality of food and violence? Yes. Genetically modified organisms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't have nutrients and vitamins to like feed your cells or your body, but I feel like when you're lacking in nutrients, it affects your um, mental stability, which can affect your emotional stability and everything else. And I also find that um, when your cells lack um, like water that's clean and pure, um, you can tell the difference if you're drinking water. Now they're putting the chemicals in the water bottles and you can tell by the buoyancy of the water that something's, it's not pure water. And you can read the ingredients on the back and it'll tell you that they're putting stuff in it. Water's first, so that's a big problem. And then when it comes to the food and food deserts and eating um, like processed foods, sometimes there's no choice and then like, um, Doing fruits and vegetables is not always the very convenient, it, unless you just take it and put it in your mouth. But um, it's a lifestyle, so if you don't like incorporate it, 
it's hard and if you're not taught that way or you don't have a palate for that now you have to build up and develop the taste for it um it's not always as easy as it sounds to me but that's what it looks like for sure and now i mean if they're putting chemicals in the water that's like the purest thing you should be able to find so i don't even know what it's like in food deserts where you don't have you know a, a trader joe's i have to go leave here to get to a trader joe's or a whole foods just to find some things that like if i go to Publix or kroger's um have wax and i just you know or like if you've ever had like an organic lemon or an organic avocado it just doesn't taste like a a conventional avocado and um or a tomato for that matter yep. so those kinds of things you know um it's scary because it's not just happening in food deserts like i come from the north i come from cali there's plenty of options but the options are like littered with the wrong like you still have to go and know what you're looking for you have to know how to read labels you have to know there's so much that they make you responsible for. Exactly. Yeah. I want to thank you so much. Your name? Ashe. Ashe. I want to thank you so much for that. Like, I could have just pass you the mic and just close this whole thing down. <laughs> yeah, right. Because that's where I'm at, too. Yeah. You know, you hit on a lot of main points with that. And I, one of the points I really want to cover is they res expect you to do all of this. Mm -hmm. I, they don't teach it to you in school. Mm -hmm. They oh. don't teach you any of it. Yeah. So, which is intentional. But now you're like, all right, how far is this trickling down? Because now you can see like the, you can see the, it's not just the grocery store, the food, it's all connected, the interconnections yeah. of the oppression, you know? Exactly. Yes, food? So, we have a farmer's market out here every Saturday. Mm -hmm. and this is the first year that we don't have black farmers out here selling. We have a farmer's market every Saturday in the summer. This is the first year that we don't have any black farmers that's selling organic vegetables. Why aren't the black farmers selling? Because we're not coming to buy it. It ain't the media. It ain't white folks. Right? We're not supporting our own black farmers who's producing. Right? <clears throat> if we did, they would still be out there. This is a food desert. Has been for years. There's a vegan restaurant right next door. They've been there eight years in a food desert. If they were in Atlanta, they would probably be millionaires right now. Mm -hmm. But if they were intentional, a young brother and sister was intentional about putting a vegan restaurant in a food desert where the residents don't know anything about a black bean burger or a kale salad but they stuck it out and they're still here. So we have the answers, mm -hmm. but if we want to take profit, I'm talking about us, I ain't talking about them. If we're motivated by profit over community service, then this will continue to happen. A bookstore, if it's a bookstore, it'd be better off in the city. But who, who needs this more? Well, communities need this more. We're only gonna be as strong as our weakest link. So if we're not focused there, we'll continue to be having these conversations and these books will still continue to be written about the same thing. All we're doing is recycling these stories over and over when we have the answers. You see a black farmer, support it. Some of them on the side of the road, we ride by them every day. But we won't stop because they're not in Kroger's, Publix, Whole Foods, or Trader Joe's but they out there every single day. Mm -hmm. And we don't stop. Or if you have one bad experience, you say, right. you know what we say, I don't even have to repeat it. But sometimes people have a bad day. Or they're not the only black farmers that's out here on the road trying to sell it. We, there's black farms right in this metropolitan area. Google is a beautiful thing. We search everything else, let's search that. I don't want to get on my soapbox. Yeah, yeah. I, I can, I can go in. <laughs>
all of y'all are ma mentioning some really good points and that's why I see your hand and that's why I strategically planted myself right here. I could have went to Atlanta. Someone was like, you ain't going to Atlanta? And I'm like, no, I'm going to go right here because who needs it more? This community. And maybe there's not everyone in this community creeping in here, but guess what? I don't know how y'all feel, but where my feet tread, all right. For a few head nods, so y'all know where I'm getting at. This community will be changed because I'm here. Oh, it's about to be over in 10 minutes. No, it will be changed because I'm here and I don't have to come back. But something about my being, being here today, this community will be changed because I'm here. Watch. So you asked about quality of food affecting quality of life? Yes. The question? Yeah, uh, how does it affect violence or quality of life? That's Okay, so um, I'm going to come from the angle of um, pregnancy and childbirth, which is like my passion, you know, um, I, that's, that's what I do. And I work with women that are pregnant um, that, and especially after giving birth, because when you see these women and you see how they don't understand how to eat, and they don't know the importance of variety because nobody ever taught them, you know. Um, so they eat the same things over and over and over and they eat out a lot, you know. So they're consuming lots of salty foods, lots of um, sugar, you know. And what happens when a woman is pregnant and she consumes those things, she eventually gets what's known as preeclampsia. So that is like toxemia. It's really like a poisoning of the blood. So what happens is she gets high blood pressure and most of the time she has gestational diabetes. So this affects her birth outcome. And at, I don't know if many of you know, but black women are about three to four more times to die in childbirth and up to a year after than our counterparts are. So we are at a disadvantage, you know, and it's really because of a lack of education. You know, it's just that on a whole, we don't know. We don't know what to eat. And the food affects, like she said, the mentality. So now you're pregnant and your hormones are all over the place. So you're gonna be angry, you're gonna be depressed, you know, and this just makes the situation worse for you. So. The blood pressure spikes high, now emergency C-section, and you may or may not make it out of the hospital alive, honestly. You know, there has been in the past five years so many women that die, black, black women, and they're getting younger and younger and younger, like in their 20s even. And we know like a 20-year-old black woman has no business dying in childbirth. You know, that's just not what should be happening. So I teach my mamas, and I just empower them with information, you know, and meals I make for them. After they give birth, that's when it can really go down. You know, people think pregnancy, pregnancy is important, birth is important, but after that, um, the mother could still have complications like hemorrhaging. Like hemorrhaging is a big deal. And we talk about foods that nourish our blood you know, and that's the main thing that a pregnant woman needs, right? Foods to nourish her blood, you know, because of the whole blood situation of what's going on. She's gaining lots more blood during pregnancy. She's losing the blood at birth. And so she's extremely deficient. So she's weak, you know, and we all love birth. It's a beautiful thing. It's a miraculous thing, but it still has brought some trauma to the body and that trauma needing to be repaired you know, and a lot of us don't know how to do that. So what happens is we have these babies and we don't breastfeed a lot of times, you know, and sometimes we do, but then we go on and on with our lives. We get out there too soon and then we start having complications. You may not get them the first year, second year, third year, but as your years go on, they show up, you know, because the blood in a woman is, a big deal all her life, you know, all our blood situations, you know, and our constitution changes at each particular um, time. So the quality 
violence even, what she spoke about. Black, the black women that I have served, a lot of them have been just really angry, you know, just really mad, you know, at their situation, at um, just their circumstances, or if the mate is there or not, or whatever, and her diet is not helping, you know, so we, you know, that's a big thing that we, we really should know. Because, you know, the saying, you know, heal a woman, heal a nation, you know? And it's not just that woman's job. It's the job of the community. It really is, you know? So, that's all. Thank you so much, everyone that shared. Anyone else wants to share anything? Yes. Mike still don't work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Peace, peace. I just want to, hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Um, I just want to just chime in on the subject, you know, a uh, quick story. Uh, they did a, a real fun experiment in um, in the prison system. Oh, my name is Chef, by the way. Yeah, I'm a chef. Uh, that's my beautiful wife, Pindu, back there. Said I was born. My aunt, yeah. Um, yes, uh, they did a, a great experiment in the prison system. Um, for three months, they took out all of the sugar. And did you know that all the violence in the prison system went down to zero? Wow. No incidents. So just imagine that, just removing sugar from the diet, what it can do to revitalize the cells, the body nourish, and then just really what you're doing when you're eating all this unprocessed food, you're cutting off your connection to the source and the well-being inside it. So I just wanted to just put that little, little note in the hat much for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are really making this place rich tonight with y'all knowledge. Thank you. And this is what I'm talking about. Sharing your wealth, not money, but knowledge. Knowledge is wealth. Knowledge is power. And that's why Tamelo decided to open back up the library that was run down, full of dust and spider webs, and hold his first meeting in the library. Hmm. Like a bookstore. First of all, I just want to thank you for choosing my life. Oh, thank you. It means a lot to this community. I mean, I'm loving this. This is what we need more of. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And, and that's why I strategically planned this here. I could have been in a big old parlor with marble floors. No, I'm not saying this ain't a parlor with marble floors. You know what I mean. Okay, but you know what I'm trying to say. Because of you know, Instagram, you all, you know what I mean? But this is where it needs to happen. Right here. I strategically support. I will drive across the bridge or whatever to support where I can certain folk. You know what I mean? Because that's another way how we make this thing happen. So you can do it in your own way and your own style, but this is how you build back a community. This is how you build back a family. They don't want our families to exist anymore. They want our families to be destructed, messed up, broke, ugly, disgusted, stressed out. This is what they want. It may not look like it because someone's rapping with a lot of chains or whatever, but this is secretly what they want. And that's why, the, if you listen to the lyrics of the songs, that's why they're, they're, they're strategically putting certain lyrics in there that make you want to every time leave somebody and get somebody else to leave somebody and get somebody. Not saying, you know, you know what I'm trying to say underneath it all. Y'all get it. I don't want to take up too much time because almost time. But let me play the bang. <laughs> and thank y'all for those who just came. I know it seemed like you just jumped into something, but you know. It's been, it's been a, a big discussion going on, but we're gonna get more into it. This is not it. This type changer will, this is the first one. So who made it to the first one, I'm thank you for that. But this is not it. It's not like I, I put this book in a box and I go home and I sleep and I keep it moving. My people are showing up, I'm feeling good. I heard about that. I heard about that. Good food. I have heard that. We all need to take a trip to East St. Louis to mob them and to support. But yeah, so this is not it. If y'all ain't following me already, follow me on Instagram. I'm sometimes a little, little slow on Instagram, but guess what? I'm creating real stuff here. I'm not just on there like, uh, 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 uh. Like I'm creating something. So it may take me a few months to get back on, but I'm, I'm doing something, okay? So 
follow me there and be patient, but I'm, I'm climbing, I'm not playing. So let me play the thing. So what this is, is the audio recording of Tamelo and Siti, which are two ideologies, but also characters in the book. The main character, she doesn't have much to say until she becomes the type changer, but y'all gotta find out that in the book, okay? As I play it, if y'all haven't came up here already and discovered what the type changer is in 3D, please be feel, feel free. If you want to say hi to me, I'm up here. If you want a book, I'm up here. But I'm going to play some. Listen. Hello. Welcome to the Type Changer Book Signing Immersive Experience. During today's book signing, you'll be able to experience the type changer with your five senses. Touch, taste, hear, see, and smell the type changer in 3D. Today's audio experience of the type changer will be read from voice actress Mayat, reading the character Siti, Olua's mom, early 40s, stern but loving, beautiful dark skin, leader of MTA, inventive, assertive, secretive, yet outspoken. Oh, uh, the world ain't as crazy once you pick what side you want. Baby, I know you may be scared about decision day. It's a big deal. I'm not trying to force you into anything. Oh, uh, look at me. Just come to the meeting tonight. After that, I promise you will understand why deciding to be shut down is so important. Don't worry about that arch. It has taken many kinks away from us. Govy bids it just high enough so we can see how prospering their city is. But baby, you know better. Kinks and one A's don't mix. Across the bridge is in our home, or even here in East St. Louis for that matter. Our home, Whereas he's belong is in our Bethlehem. Now, how's my fault? Bubby has marched over the bridge with their fancy technology and positioned themselves in our schools, denying our rights. And we left them for the sake of medical services. Now we have to pay the cost by submitting our youths to vulgar images of the 1A male's hair. Now our young brothers and sisters have been found by the dozens daily snatching out strands of coils to fit into their 1A washed world. There is no use for a random strand like this to be grown out of your head. Sometimes what you believe, no one else will believe. But if it is an idea that can't leave you, look inside. The Most High will help you. Alua, you gotta snap out of it. Today's audio experience of the type changer will be read from voice actor John Duela Puente, reading for Tamelo, 17 years old, burgeoning East St. Louis orator, a Louis boyfriend, dedicated, slightly arrogant, athletic built, huge fro, visionary, and abandoned by his parents. But you see, Mr. Cowway, I'm going to change that. I'm going to make East St. Louis great again. You need to erase the board because those careers are degrading. Dead end positions. Govy gave kings to keep them docile and dormant in East St. Louis. They want to slave the prisoners of the 4C type mindset. For those considering relocating across the bridge where the Govy arches promise a gateway to freedom. They have persuaded you into their A1 noose with fresh food, a life of benefits, but are a couple of fattening meals worth losing your fro? They entertain you with their smile through the glaring media screens. Then once they capture you, they shave off your soul. The library is the best place to hold the campaign meetings. <laughs> it's a place that that holds the power of knowledge. 
It's not hard. You just have to believe you have the power. And this concludes today's audio experience of the Type Changer. What's up, fam? I'm Kazim Dejamu, owner of Black Dot Culture Center. We're downtown Lothonia, 6984 Main Street in Lothonia. This right here is the village meeting place. Come check us out. Peace and love. How long you been here and what's the name of the business again? Six years. We've been here six years and the name of the business is Black Dot Cultural Center and Bookstore. You on social media? Yes. Can you let them know? Uh, Instagram is Black Dot CC. Black D-O-T. CC. That's also our Facebook page as well. Awesome. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. All right. See you. She is full lace my head, she steams my head, and she speaks 
life over my hair. I used to sit in salons and they go, oh my God, your hair's so thick. But not her, she took me in and she said I've been addicted. What's, what's the name of your business? So where? Uh, Toya Ray Salon. Um, my Instagram is Toya dot Ray R E Y. I wasn't expecting that, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cindy. Everyone got their name. When you bless others, they'll bless you back, yes. right? I watch her manifest this. There you go. Yes, you, yeah, I'll I she'll, watch her manifest she'll, this. She'll remember yes. when this wasn't even existing, and I would talk to her about it. So you were yeah. there. And I was and rushing I all was my clients out yes. of the long day. Like, I got to get there. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so I'm proud, proud of you. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for the, the slow writing. Yeah. I'm coming along. Take your time. Take your time. I'm trying to get who was in order. <laughs> No, I'm okay. Right I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, not Frosty. Yeah. 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 Good, bad. Yeah. It's better. I'm just from the whole nice place. Where I'm from is totally different. Yeah, it is definitely yes. weird. It's part of California. Like South Carolina? Yeah. Oh, South Carolina. I was in the Bay Area. Okay, that's a point. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that's a point. 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 Yeah, that's a